Hey everybody, QG here. I'm finally reacting to your guys' comments on my All Total Drama Seasons Ranked in 2023 Quick Clicks video. So let's just get right into it because I totally did not just record this entire video and f have my mic muted. I, I totally didn't do that just a little bit ago. All right, so we're gonna start with Wrath Radical's comment. Um, I really like his all-star statement here. He basically says that um, this season was inevitably doomed no matter how they wrote it. And the solution would have been to write uh, an underdog season instead titled Small Stars. I 100% agree with this assessment. I think that is a fantastic idea and definitely the direction they should have taken. I also love the parody name you came up with. Um, let's see. Island definitely has a slower pace. I definitely agree with that. And Island Heather, I also agree, is not the best antagonist. Not because not because of she has a bad presence or anything. It's just her plot armor. Like, I could I can turn the other way for Lashana, Lindsay, DJ, whatever. But Jeff's elimination, that, that was just dumb. There was no reason why Heather should not have been eliminated there. They didn't they even come up with a good reason either, at least. Uh, action, I felt like Action did a good job contending off the story beats that exist in an island. I agree to an extent, yeah. Um, I consider Lindsay to be at her worst this season with the many inconsistencies. That's an interesting take, but I definitely see where you could be coming from with the idea of uh, that not being a favorable season for Lindsay. Um, I don't... I think people very much overestimate her arc. Uh, I, sh I say arc in quotations that she gets in action as existing in the first place. I, I think I think she's just inherently um, her arc is just inherently like it already happened, you know, like her arc was an island where she needed to uh, not be at Heather's beck and call anymore. And then an action is sort of just the aftermath of that. So in a way, it feels like her and Beth have already kind of went through that arc. And now we're just seeing the results of said arc. So like, yes, she's, uh, uh, you know, more outgoing here, more taking charge here. But like, it's because of, you know, it's because she's, <laughs> how do you phrase it? Like, she doesn't have anyone to uh, report to anymore. You know, um, on the plus side, I feel like Beth is perhaps the best finalist the show has ever had. That's a very interesting take, but I could definitely see where you're coming from from a character standpoint. Execution wise, I think they could have properly built up to her a little bit more in action. I think they do a good job at the beginning and in the final episodes of the season, but maybe a couple more episodes there in the middle where Beth is kind of given more standout moments would have helped. Um... Pretty glad they didn't cast her in another season because I'm sure she would have been ruined one way or another. I mean, regardless whether they cast her or not, I think in universe, Beth doesn't want to come back anyways. So, um, World Tour, of course, has a few duds here and there, such as the whole Sierra fiasco. And unfortunately, by the halfway mark, the finals are practically predictable to figure out. Isn't that a great experience? Yeah, Sierra is definitely a problematic character. Enough people have in the total drama community have talked about Sierra enough that I don't think I need to explain why she's considered. Uh, a problem character, a problematic character. I kind of disagree on the whole finalist being predictable being a bad thing, though. It depends how you do it. Uh, and like I said, World Tour is my favorite season, so you know, I don't, I don't think it's inherently a bad thing that uh, World Tour has predictable finalists about halfway through because Ala Heather is handled so well, and the characters around them are handled so well in the season as a whole properly builds up to an Ala Heather finale so well like I feel like it'd almost be a bad thing if the finalists weren't predictable um it now of course if it's every elimination is predictable that's a little different but the finalist being predictable is kind of a good thing I feel like you know because oh, you you have to know where the end point of the season is a show has to be writing in such a way where it builds up to a proper conclusion and the proper conclusion comes in the way of two finalists and so if you're not properly building up to those finalists then are you really writing a season or are you just writing things happening you know um, and i've talked to an extent about um the highs and lows of world tour in my own video on world tour that i made a while back uh, you can check it out by clicking the eye in the corner um it's pretty short it's not anything fancy but uh yeah 
Pocketsu Island, perhaps one of the funnier seasons, has my favorite cast out of the three generations. None of them miss at all, uh, which can't be said for the previous generations. It feels very separate from the other seasons, which is probably its biggest strength. Interesting uh, take on Pocketsu, for sure. I agree with some of it. Uh, definitely one of the funnier seasons, for sure. I'm not sure if I agree that it's my favorite cast of the bunch, though. I like it more than the Island overall. Island has a few too many characters I don't care for, by comparison. But I really like Revenge of the Islands cast a lot. So I don't know if I can say Pac-2 is my favorite, but it's definitely top two in that regard. Um, I also do think it's a strength that Pac-2 feels very separated from the other seasons because it's it's a good entry point. Like, anyone can watch Pac-2 at any point. You don't need to have watched any prior seasons. You don't need, or I suppose the All-Stars uh, ending with the island sinking is notable, but it's not really that important for Pac-2 in the grand scheme of things either, I feel like. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I've talked to an extent about how much I like Pac-2 and why I've liked it. Like, I, I've made a whole half hour long video essay discussing why I like this season so much. And if you guys really want to see my true, uh, unfiltered thoughts on Pac-2 in full, you can check that video out by clicking the eye in the corner. It's, it's a very long video. It took a lot of time and effort. Trust me, it's good. Um, yeah. And then we have Redonkis Race at number one. Uh, Redonkis Race is perhaps the most intense season of Overwatch. I definitely agree with that. The instrumental and stuff. Yeah. Redonkis Race, I think, um, really fixed the complaints they got about All-Stars and Pocket 2 of having predictable eliminations by simply changing up the format. And so now by having like, um, you know, now that Redonkis Race has it in such a way where uh, you can't truly predict who's going to get eliminated at any point in time. It made for a very interesting watching experience and still makes for a compelling watching experience on rewatch even. Next, we have Lala List. Uh, Pocket 2 Island characters are only made of one trait. I disagree. Uh, the eliminations are so predictable. I don't think that's a bad thing. Challenges are boring. Subjective. Uh, I don't know. I don't... I don't I think there's a lot more boring challenges in earlier seasons, especially Island. Like, I don't know. Um, yeah, okay, fine. This one is under. I feel like the producers here did not really want the competition to be the main thing of All-Stars. They wanted to build a story around Mal and how Mike was going to be saved. The eliminations are a bit of an excuse, and if you watch it that way, it's actually quite good. See, I get what you mean by that. I could definitely agree with the assessment that um, All Stars was more focused on telling Mike slash Mal's story than it was on having like a reality show competition season. And that would be fine if the story they're trying to tell wasn't god awful in execution and material. I'm sorry, but I just, I don't agree that Mike and or Mal has a good story at all. I'm probably going to have to make a video discussing Mike and his alters and stuff in full to just fully explain why this character is as bad as he is. Um, Storylines of Redonkis Race are sometimes a bit easy. Uh, I assume by that you mean a bit simple, which I agree. Uh, not always a bad thing, but it's definitely true. Um... It's only 13 episodes. I don't think 13 episode seasons are a bad thing. It just depends how you do them. Like, Revenge of the Island, I think, is very, very well thought out for a 13 episode season and ver paced very appropriately as well, even if it does have a bit of a late merge. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I also agree that I'm glad we got more seasons after Island so that Courtney and Noah could shine more. Next we have Trish Unicorn. Trish Unicorn. Loving the Pocket 2 appreciation. I don't really know where my ranking would be, but I think something like this. Number one is Pocket 2. Interesting. You have it higher than me uh, because I'm in it. I'm JK. I just love it because of how they treat the characters and that the best couple of media history is here. My, my, my. I'm going to stop this here because if I try to dissect the season even further I'm going to <laughs> I agree with the explosion like when I get excited and uh, talking about Pocket 2 Island and what I like about it I definitely feel this explosion emoji internally like I don't know what it is but something about Pocket 2 gets me really passionate about it when I talk about it 
Uh, Ronkus Race, I watched it as a wee lad, and some characters really funny and cool to me. So many new characters, like the Step Bros Sisters and the Gay Rockers. <laughs> yes, I agree, the Gay Rockers, 100%. Uh, number three is Avenge. I don't like how they treated Mike at all, same. But some of the other characters had their moments. Also, Stacy deserved better. True, but Stacy is also a perfect first boot character. Number four is action. I just find it boring. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, five is island. Boring to me. Jokes don't really land. Questionable things happen. All true to an extent uh, throughout the season, but especially during the first half. Number six is World Tour. I'm going to get hate for this, but I never really liked World Tour because of some racist moments. It made me kind of uncomfortable. Of course, this has always been a problem with the series, especially in the beginning, but that Chinese food episode doesn't do it for me. That is definitely true. Uh, Total Drama in general has had its issues with racist depictions of stuff or racist lines and bigoted things, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I, Total Drama has definitely had it, a lot of moments of being problematic, and World Tour is no exception to that, even if it's considered... Uh, by and large the best season by most fans um and then number seven is all stars because of mike yep fair next we have Al alan asifuina alan asifuina i think that's right uh all stars yeah inevitable not notice all the problems there I don't really get the complaint of Pocketsu's cast is weird because people love characters like izzy and scary girl so is it is it the quantity? Do people want like a more balance? Or do people just only like those characters in small doses? Or do you just have to be a conventionally attractive character to be funny like that? I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the general consensus on how that goes. More problems like separating Gwent. Yeah, the way they handled that was kind of iffy. Strange situation, some of the characters, sure. The unnecessary and unjust return of Courtney. Um, here's the thing. Courtney absolutely deserved to return. She was definitely robbed in Island, and I think she her coming back the way she did was fine as well. But that doesn't change the fact that she definitely did go overboard with it, but is also like the main antagonist of that season. So yes, it's uh some of the stuff she does and has access to is unjust, but that's also kind of the point. So if your least favorite thing about a season is the antagonist, then isn't that somewhat a good thing? Challenges and movies are great. I agree. Uh, this is the first season that I saw the franchise Revenge of the Island. Mine too. Revenge of the Island was the first season I watched as it was airing. Uh, prior seasons, I had to watch them through uh, older uploads and such. And as a place in my heart, the only issue I have is that there's not enough time to be custom to new characters. Again, I don't really agree with the whole you can't do a total drama season in 13 episodes assessment. I don't agree with that. Um, okay, and then they don't really have anything to say beyond that. Next, we have Marino with a neutral face. Uh, well, my top would be like this. All Stars Revenge, Action, and Pocket 2 Island Tour Race. Interesting ranking. Uh, you don't always see Pakatu in the middle of the pack. It's usually either uh, someone's uh, underrated favorite or near the bottom. You don't always see it in the middle. So interesting placement there. All stars. Next we have Trap. Uh, All stars. Bad with a few bright spots. Yeah. Pakatu Island. An okay mess, but it did bring my favorite character that didn't come from the first generation. Sean is great. I will agree with you there. Um, and despite how much I like Pocket 2, I also have to agree that it's a mess. Like, that season is a mess. That is very true. Um, uh, I think this season's pretty good with some great characters, and it would have been one spot higher if it didn't only have 13 episodes. Again, I don't agree with the assessment that a 13-episode season can't be done well. I just don't agree. Um, a really good season, great challenges, but it does have problems like limiting Harold, even though he's the protagonist, in my opinion. The first seven episodes of the whole Gwent drama is pretty bad. Um... I don't think Action has an inherent protagonist, honestly. That that season is just so aimless in a lot of ways. Uh, if you view Harold as the protagonist, that's fine, I guess. I don't really agree. And I also don't think he should have been a finalist. Nor do I think a character like Lindsay or DJ or um, Zeke should be finalists in any capacity. Um, you could argue a case for Lashana or Courtney in the future, but they'd need work. Like, they would need a season of build-up for it first. Uh, in the first seven episodes of the whole Gwent drama, yeah, oh my goodness, did that really last seven episodes? Jeez. Um, yeah, I agree, though. Gwent drama was pretty, uh... 
Uh, Bernalcus Ray, super fun season, some great dynamics. Yep, agreed. Fantastic season, Brawl Special. Here's my one grab, so I think Heather has a bit too much plan armor. Okay, yep, we already covered that. Songs are surprisingly catchy. Yep, World Tour, uh, its songs being its highlight is not something I could have ever predicted. Uh, going around the world felt epic. Cody and Sarah were really wholesome. I do not agree with that assessment at all. I think the, that relationship is very problematic in how it's portrayed in a lot of ways. Um, only bad things to clunk in drama, but then again, I didn't mind because it brought great drama. Yeah, that's fair. Next, we have Pandora with a very long comment. Okay. Um, don't have a lot left after this, though, so I'll try to keep this section brief. All stars, nothing in this season was enjoyable to me. Some of the picks of this cast seem so random. It also ruined all characters. Also, Sunday Money Sunday exists. It's out of my last place. So, I have interesting thoughts about that. Um, first of all, I don't think All Stars is completely irredeemable. It does have its strengths, and I do think the way certain characters are handled is fine. Um, but I also agree that some of the picks of the cast are a bit odd. Sierra, I don't agree with, though, because she has been in one season, so she needs more seasons. And the one season she was in, she got fourth place. So, yeah, I think she definitely should have come back for a season, and an All Star season, no less, for sure. Um... And Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Sun. Oh my goodness, Sunday, Muddy Sunday, um, is actually not a bad episode, in my opinion. I think it's actually a pretty good one until it ends. Um, of course, it has its problems. Mal pulling the chart out of thin air is pretty dumb, but it's also kind of funny in, in a sense. I've done a whole video talking about how I actually like the chart in Sunday, Monday, Sunday, and what it was trying to do in this video here, but you can click on the I. That's a whole Courtney analysis video, but um, I don't know. It's it, it it trips over the finish line, you know? All-Stars trips over the finish line, and it retroactively ruins everything that came before it. Uh, not just in that season, but in a lot of previous seasons as well. Pacto on crazy designs but boring cast. How in the world is Pacto's cast boring? There are a lot of things you could describe that cast with. Boring is not one of them. But then goes on to say that their favorite characters from the cast are Jasmine, Sean, and Sammy, who are arguably the most neutral or average contestants in the season. Like, I don't understand people's Pacto takes sometimes. Like, I get it not being your favorite season or you not really caring much for it, but the way you guys try to justify your placement of it is so odd a lot of the times. It just, it's faulty logic, usually. It's okay to just say you didn't think it was that funny and move on. Like, you don't have to write an essay on it and then be wrong, you know? Final two is pretty decent, but there's a lack of a villain. Um, that's true. For the most part, Sugar kind of fills that role. Scarlet fills that role for an episode. The thing is, I don't think that's a bad thing because, like, you have to remember, All Stars came right before Pocketu. And All Stars had Mal, who was excessively, excessively given screen time. To the point where I personally got very tired of hearing what the antagonist is up to. So. I don't personally mind Pakatu flipping it on its head and having an antagonist role take a back seat instead. I don't personally mind how they handled that. Revenge of the Island, my main issue for this season episode count. Again, I don't get the complaint of Revenge of the Island's episode count. I think it's very well done in the grand scheme of things. Uh, while Zoe and Mike takes most of it for both, as you can tell, I don't like Zoe and Mike. That's fair. Uh, not liking Zoe and Mike is fair. Uh, Rewatching the season made me realize how much of Mary Sue Zoe is. I highly disagree there. Zoe is not a Mary Sue in Revenge of the Island. She is borderline a Mary Sue in All Stars, however. I will concur there. But Revenge of the Island Zoe is pretty good. Action. This is like that awkward middle child. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to address the rest of this here. Uh, it's just not worth it. It's, it's, it's okay to just say action is the awkward middle child and leave it at that, I think. Uh, World Tour. Uh, World Tour only did Heather and Cody justice while ruining pretty much everyone else. I don't really see how it did Cody justice. He felt 
he almost felt like he regressed a bit uh, by the start of it by still hitting on Gwen, you know? So I, I don't really get that, I guess. Um, Rionkis Race, really nice and refreshing. Yep, I agree there. And then you have Island at number one. Uh, LaShawn and Gwen friendship is so nice to see. Too bad we didn't sell much from them after that season. I agree. We should have gotten more of LaShawn and Gwen. We should have gotten more of LaShawn in general as well. And the entire vibe of the season is just different. That's true, but that's also not going to click with everyone. Hawk 2 over Island is a crime. Yep, I agree. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to commit it anyways. <laughs> okay, uh, this ranking is, yeah, pretty typical as far as I can tell. Uh, don't really have anything to say here. Yeah, I don't know why they rated Drama Rama. It's a spinoff. Pac 2 Island was way too short of a season. The villain of the show got eliminated as soon as she was revealed. The island was fake, made of machine, including the animals. Only a few contestants were likable. Should I go on? How's it number two? What a joke. With the sad emoji. Um, I, I don't view Scarlet as the main villain of the season, so I don't really mind that she got eliminated the same episode she was ousted. Uh, I don't see how the island being fake and made of machines and stuff is a bad thing. I thought that was a nice twist, and uh, I, I will say I think that twist came a bit late. I wish they could have used that more throughout the season, but I don't really get the complaint of it being a drawback. Like that's one of the cool things about Pocket 2 is it's artificial island and what they can do with it. Um, we have this ranking. Yeah, that's a pretty typical ranking. A lot of these rankings start looking pretty similar after you've seen enough of them. Homie put Pocket 2 Island at number two and I do it again too. Stop hitting on Dave. I don't know what that means. Pakatu Island deserved the number two. I don't care. Y'all can cry. I would never be pa that passive aggressive about Pakatu Island, but I definitely think Pakatu is overhated for sure. 100% it's overhated. Dave is not worthy of a number two. Also, Pakatu should be second last in my opinion because only All Stars is worse. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. You do you, I guess. I, I think Dave's a pretty good character for what he is. Dave is overhated. He's overhated, but his hate is also justified, if that makes sense. Like, he's overhated for the wrong reasons, you know? I don't hate him as much as other characters. As the season goes on, he just gets worse and worse. Yeah, that's the point. That's that's what makes him a good character. He, he has a downward spiral character arc. That's a real thing. Honestly, I believe it's the outside interference that ruined it for him. That's true. I kind of agree his last two episodes are just horrible, the one where he's eliminated in the finale, but other than that, he was hilarious. Love the irony where it looked like he was the only normal one, but it turns out he's just it weird. I would take that a step further and say he's the weirdest of the bunch, um, and I, I love that. That is that is very total drama to be that ironic. I blame the poor writing. He acted way out of character. I disagree. From episode one, Dave acted weird, um, and I addressed that in my you know Pocket 2 video, which I talked about earlier. And the last comment is from BBBB, all of the seasons suck. Um, and in, in the replies to this, we have people accusing of like, oh, he's just baiting or oh, he's just kidding. Guys, trust me when I say this is this comment here. This is my favorite one on the video because it is the most authentic. I can tell that BB is BBBB is a authentic total drama fan. Because only an authentic Total Drama fan knows that every season of this show sucks. The concept is way better than the execution nine times out of ten when it comes to Total Drama. That doesn't mean Total Drama doesn't have good elements and good seasons, but also the show as a whole kind of just sucks. And that's why I really like this comic. Because, yeah, like, yeah, only a real Total Drama fan would admit that every season of this show is not that good. So, with that being said, thank you guys so much for leaving so many replies on this video and watching this video as well. Um, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel for more content like this, leave a comment uh, giving thoughts on this video as well as the previous video if you'd like. Um, share this video with your friends, uh, other Total Drama fans, see what they think. Um, let me know what other quick click concept videos you want to see in the future i'd love doing more of these quick clicks videos where i respond to your guys's comments and stuff with more total drama quick clicks of course um and until i make oh and the new season the new season is coming out in just a couple days it is almost here guys it it has been fun to reminisce on the past seasons but i'm ready for new stuff so with that being said thank you guys so much for watching and until i make another video peace